A case study, we're gonna talk about the Northwest natural gas explosion it happened in Portland in 2016 on October 19th. So this came in originally as uh, uh, what we would call a gas major. So we had a significant leak that was uh, called in by a construction crew or an excavation crew that was working in the area. And uh, there was no official request for an investigator. I was in my office and was just monitoring the gas emergency. We don't typically go on those because they typically don't result in a fire. They, they get handled by the fire department and there's no major incident. But then suddenly what seemed to be normal tra uh, traffic on the radio escalated to May Day and greater alarms. And at that point, I responded immediately to the scene. I got there quite early. And when I arrived, we had um, obviously a building that had completely exploded. As I was approaching the scene, there were multiple structures with windows broke out. And as I roll up to the scene behind the chief, um, you can see the chief's vehicle here. Uh, I parked just behind him and I went up and checked on him and uh, the chief was still just shell-shocked by the whole incident and uh, was trying to manage the best that he could, but he was also a part of the incident that had just happened. And then in the uh, parking lot across the street, I saw firefighters down in the, in the parking lot and injured. Um, one firefighter was standing over another with blood uh, coming down his, uh, his head and face. And uh, so I knew that we had a, a major, uh, major catastrophe going on here that could have, that may have resulted in loss of lives. So I just wanted to emphasize those things to you guys, uh, mainly because these things can happen so suddenly and unexpectedly and can really kind of throw everything into turmoil suddenly. Uh, one of the uh, issues that we had here too was that we had lines down that were in the street and we had fire crews that were still out in the street, some of which were injured. Um, and that was a major issue on here as well. One thing I did note at the scene was that I had heard over the air that there was an excavator that had been working in the area. But when I got to the scene, I didn't see an excavator anywhere right away. Um, it was later discovered that the excavator had been moved away from the scene and probably appropriately so, but, uh, that was something that had certainly changed before I got there. So things do change quickly. This was the neighboring building. You can see in this uh, photo here, if you look up, up here, you can see this uh, pot that's kind of hanging somewhat precariously on the edge up there. Doesn't look like it's gonna take much for that to come down. Also, we've got windows hanging loose. These are things to just be aware of. If you do go to these scenes early, that these kind of hazards may not have been mitigated yet. So just be very cautious of those things if you do end up going out onto these scenes. This was about a block away. We had windows broken out of uh, all of the ground level windows along a building uh, a storefront. I think this was Kitchen Caboodle. And uh, so the damage extended for several blocks. Uh, this is in the audio you heard, you heard one firefighter request a ladder to get a woman out of the structure. I'll tell you a quick story about this, this woman. She had, uh, she was actually still in the structure when it exploded. She was up on the third floor and she had an apartment up there and her front door was actually down the stairs and the firefighters had gone to her front door and knocked on it and nobody answered, but they had had information that everybody was evacuated from the structure. So they wanted to quickly move along and get uh, other people evacuated, not knowing that she was still up there. And uh, we ended up learning from her that when the explosion happened, she was in bed and suddenly she just felt her bed lift and then come down and she was covered in debris and she basically crawled out of her bed and she was on a roof. And uh, that's when the firefighter spotted her through a ladder to her and uh, helped her down. It's important to note also in this, uh, with that incident is that woman was pretty much not injured. She had like a small burn on her hand from trying to slide down the roof and the roof was hot, but she just left. She was a young college girl and uh, she got a hold of her parents, got a flight out of town almost immediately and had no interest in coming back to Portland after that incident. So she was actually difficult to track down and try to get information from. So 
it's important to identify witnesses as soon as possible. And in this case, that may not be possible for, for uh, uh, private entities coming onto the scene. But uh, I mean, that just illustrating how quickly someone can just disappear from the scene that may be a critical witness. So this was uh, the area where the excavation work was being done. You'll notice that we don't see a whole lot of burn damage in this area. Uh, we see just a little bit of scorching on the sides of the, the plastic here on these pipes. We see just a little bit of uh, the sidewalk lifting here. Um, sorry, I, my pointer's not showing. So the sidewalk lifting over here, you can see that a little bit and then the scorching on the pipes over here. But that's basically what we had in the area where the excavation work was occurring. So when we uh, originally got this call, we did have some pretty serious injuries. We had at least two civilians that were injured. Uh, one police officer that was trying to assist in the area had, I believe he had a blown eardrum. One firefighter uh, was seriously injured. A battalion chief had been thrown through a doorway and uh, a fire officer had sustained serious injuries being thrown across the street into uh, construction fencing. This is the construction fencing that he was thrown into. Uh, his body made an impact into the fencing over here and his leg broke across one of these uh, support uh, structures here. And uh, these lines that came down ended up being very close to the uh, section of fencing that he was laying on. One of the other firefighters who was injured spotted that and went over and took the line and moved it. Um, and that line was still active, but he could see the line coming very close to where that fire, that fire officer was injured and, uh, and he was in a lot of danger. So that firefighter ended up taking some uh, very serious uh, risk there in, in protecting the other one. And this is uh, his helmet and equipment that was left at the site initially. This is the door that the fire chief was thrown through. This is across the street from the structure. He was thrown through these doors here into this business. Now the agencies that ended up assisting us on this incident were uh, PPB forensics. So that's Portland Police Bureau forensics team. ATF was on this scene pretty much right away. State police was called out to assist with the dig. Uh, Gresham Fire uh, Mutual Aid Agency, they also came out. And then the restoration team ended up being a very helpful group. They, of course, were in communication with the insurance companies, and they helped provide us with heavy equipment. Uh, they also helped us get all the uh, security fencing that we needed to make sure that this structure was uh, as safe as possible and secure. And uh, they assisted us in getting 24-hour uh, security on the scene as well. These were some of the parties that ended up being interested in this investigation. OSHA, the Public Utilities, Northwest Natural Gas, uh, Depart uh, DEQ, uh, the Excavation Company, of course, and uh, multiple insurance carriers for damaged structures in the area. Now, working with the uh, private parties, we set up a gathering area for all of the private entities that were involved, and we provided them an initial briefing of how we would try to include them in the investigation. And... Uh, the damaged area was over here, or the uh, excavation area was over here. And a lot of the evidence that we brought out, we ended up bringing out to the street in this general area over here. They were gathered in the parking lot where we see the firefighters in this, this photo here. But uh, we wanted them to see as we were collecting uh, debris and evidence from the scene so that they could stop the investigation at any time to get in and get photos and uh, and look at any evidence that was being brought out. And uh, move along quickly here. So this is before and after the side of the building. We ended up spotting uh, the flame front moving from right to left here in these windows from video across the street. That was useful for our investigation. This just shows uh, the severity of the damage again. And sorry, I'm moving along quite quickly here because I'm running into time. So um, now what happened on this incident? Basically, we had an excavation team that was doing work in the area. 
Uh, they started work at about 8.30. They made a call to Northwest Natural Gas at 8.51 to report that they had hit a line. And then uh, 911 dispatch didn't receive a call until 9.07. The companies were dispatched at 9.08. Truck three arrived at, this was our first truck on scene. They arrived at 9-11. Notice the time from when the incident happened just before 8-51. And then finally we had an explosion at 9-38. So there was a considerable amount of time for gas to build up in this structure. And what they ended up hitting was a one inch steel gas line. And that was properly marked. When they hit that line, the line bent, but it did not break, but it did separate at one of the fittings. Now, for any of you folks that have ever uh, been to Portland, might have taken a tour of the uh, underground city there, and this sidewalk area, the gas was flowing underneath the sidewalk here when it was released. And when we lifted that sidewalk section away, we ended up finding this old stairwell that went down into the basement of a bagel shop that was right there. And uh, that had filled that bagel shop. They were, they were using ovens down there. And uh, we, uh, we don't know the specific ignition source for the fuel, but uh, we know that there were ignition sources in that bagel shop that ignited the, the gas and caused uh, the damage that we saw there. And that's everything I have for you. So I hope